For AZ304, let's go ahead and dive right into design monitoring. Application Insights, a feature of Azure Monitor, is an extensible application performance management or APM service for developers and DevOps professionals. Use it to monitor your live applications. It will automatically detect performance anomalies and includes powerful analytics tools to help you diagnose issues and to understand what users actually do with your app. It's designed to help you continuously improve performance and usability. Azure Monitor for VMs monitors the performance and health of virtual machines and virtual machine scale sets, including their running processes and dependencies on other resources. It can help deliver predictable performance and availability of vital applications by identifying performance bottlenecks and network issues, and can also help to understand whether an issue is related to other dependencies. Azure Monitor for VMs supports Windows and Linux operating systems on Azure Virtual Machines, Virtual Machine Scale Sets, Hybrid Virtual Machines connected with Azure Arc, On-Premises Virtual Machines, and Virtual Machines hosted in another cloud environment. Azure Monitor for Containers is a feature designed to monitor the performance of container workloads deployed to manage Kubernetes clusters hosted on AKS, or Azure's Kubernetes service, self-managed Kubernetes clusters hosted on Azure using AKS Engine, or Azure Container Instances, self-managed Kubernetes clusters hosted on Azure Stack or on-premises, Azure Red Hat OpenShift, Azure Arc-enabled Kubernetes, which is in preview and thus probably not in, important on this exam. Azure Monitor Logs is based on Azure Data Explorer and log queries are written using the same Kusto query language or KQL. This is a rich language designed to be easy to read and author, so you should be able to start writing queries with some basic guidance. Smart groups are automatically created by using machine learning algorithms to combine related alerts that represent a single issue. When an alert is created, the algorithm adds it to a new smart group or an existing smart group based on information such as historical patterns, similar properties, and similar structure. If you have a chance, check out the Microsoft Ignite session on Azure Monitor Fundamentals in the link at the lower right-hand corner of the slide. Event Grid is an eventing backplane that enables event-driven reactive programming. It uses a publish-subscribe model. Publishers emit events but have no expectation about which events are handled. Subscribers decide which events they want to handle it. It has the following characteristics. It's dynamically scalable, low cost, serverless, and at least one delivery. Event Hubs is a big data pipeline. It facilitates the capture, retention, and replay of telemetry and event stream data. The data can come from many concurrent sources. Event Hubs allows telemetry and event data to be made available to a variety of stream processing infrastructures and analytics services. It is available either as data streams or bundled event batches. It has the following char characteristics. Low latency, capable of receiving and processing millions of events per second, at least once delivery. Service bus is intended for traditional enterprise applications. These enterprise applications require transactions, ordering, duplicate detection, and instantaneous consistency. Service Bus enables cloud-native applications to provide reliable state transition management for business processes. When handling high-value messages that cannot be lost or duplicated, use Azure Service Bus. Service Bus also facilitates highly secure communication across hybrid cloud solutions and can connect existing on-premises systems to cloud solutions. Service Bus has the following char characteristics. Reliable asynchronous message delivery, enterprise messaging as a service that requires polling. Advanced messaging features like FIFO or first in first out, batching slash sessions, transactions, dead lettering, temporal control, routing and filtering, and duplicate detection, at least once delivery, and optional in order delivery. I want to go back to that link at the bottom of this. This is a fantastic comparison of the services. Highly recommend to re-review that as well. One of the largest benefits of Azure Policy is the insight and control it provides over resources in a subscription or management group of subscriptions. This control can be exercised in many different ways, such as preventing resources from being created in the wrong location, enforcing common and consistent tag usage, or auditing existing resources for appropriate configurations and settings. 
In all cases, data is generated by Azure Policy to enable you to understand the compliance state of your environment. The Azure Active Directory audit logs provide records of system activities for compliance. To access the audit report, select audit logs in the monitoring section of Azure Active Directory. An audit log has a default list view that shows the date and time of the occurrence, the service that logged the occurrence, the category and name of the activity, the what, the status of the activity, success or failure, the target, the initiator, and the actor, which is who, of an activity. To optimize cloud costs, there are several tools that we have, one being the TCO calculator, total cost of ownership. And this walkthrough kind of shows you some of the different things you can do, like defining your workloads for servers, databases, and storage. Azure Cost Management, which has capabilities to analyze cloud costs, monitoring with budgets, um, and optimize with uh, recommendations, which includes Azure Advisor. Azure Migrate, which we've talked about in, in some of the previous slides and other sessions. And different ways to modify the cost one is with an enterprise agreement. And in particular, one thing that very few people know about is with enterprise dev test subscriptions. These are special lower rates on Windows virtual machines, cloud services, SQL database, HD Insight app service, and logic apps that you can get simply by checking a box in the EA portal or enterprise agreement portal. The Azure Hybrid benefit is a pricing benefit for customers who have licenses with Software Assurance, which helps maximize the value of existing on-premises Windows Server and or SQL Server license investments when migrating to Azure. Eligible customers can save up to 40% on Azure Virtual Machines, Infrastructure as a Service, or IaaS, and save up to 55% on Azure SQL Database, Platform as a Service, or PaaS, and SQL Server on Azure Virtual Machines, IaaS with Azure Hybrid benefit, which increases to up to 80% when combined with Azure Reserved Instances. Azure Reserved Instances can be assigned at the enrollment or the subscription level. Identifying availability requirements. There's three major impacts to compute cost that can affect this. CPU cores, memory, and storage. Considerations to network cost. Egress starts after the first five gigabyte. Ingress is absolutely free. Storage costs, how often is it being used? How frequently are you using standard or premium disks? Are you deleting unused disks not attached? This is a good chart also when you are selecting Azure VMs, uh, what type of categories. So for this exam, I might be familiar with the types of VMs we have because they're designed to maximize and optimize those compute costs, whether we're doing something like HPC for high performance compute or for doing high memory to CPU for relational database servers, then we choose something like memory optimized. Or if we're looking simply for testing and development, small to medium databases, well then general purpose would probably take care of the job. Considerations to identity costs with Azure Active Directory. Of course, we have different versions, free P1 and P2. And we want to look at the features and know these for the exam. So click on that link at the bottom so you know what you get with Premium 1 and Premium 2. Also, a little known fact that few people know, with free, you actually are limited. It's still a pretty good number, but you're limited to 500,000 objects and 10 apps per user, but there's no SLA. Um, P1 only lacks identity protection, PIM, and access reviews. But one way to reduce, reduce cost with Azure Active Directory is to use an enterprise agreement. And there you have it. That's design and monitoring.